Now that everything is in place, all of our costume and prop elements have been imported from ZBrush and all the corresponding maps have been assigned. Um, now it's actually time to start setting up our render. Um, the great thing here is there are a bunch of preset elements that you can either purchase or come stock with Character Creator 3, which makes this whole process extremely easy and actually allows you to come up with a consistent uh, render style across a series of concepts that would be much harder if we had to kind of create it individually every time. So as we switch elements in and out, um, it's going to be much easier for us to keep those elements consistent so we can kind of piecemeal together different things. So here you can see I'm just using some existing sort of uh, um, established uh, lighting scenarios and going through, checking visibility, seeing how they interact with our character. Um, it's a typical studio lighting setup with our, you know, a fill, key light and rim light. Um, but... For me, I'm trying to sell this idea of it not only being this dramatically lit piece, but that it's our characters, this, um, you know, uh, this individual roaming this cyberpunk city. So even though some of it's going to be this uh, city, uh, um, you know, element, I do want to have some impactful lighting coming from some studio elements. So uh, right now, just kind of experimenting with what is what. Um, here you can actually manipulate the hue of that lighting scenario. So I can actually increase uh, or decrease the, you know, the temperature as I see fit. Um, but even here in the real-time render window, it's incredible the effect uh, that you can get. So if you uh, switch over here to the modifier window, you can you know, increase or decrease the intensity of that lighting. So it's just kind of a matter of going back and forth, experimenting, seeing what works, what doesn't work. Um, that's what I really like about this part of the process, when you can just go in there and experiment with things and see what gives you the best effect. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it is about crafting an image uh, that obviously uh, executes the idea, but you, you do want it to look cool. So, um, you know, right now I'm thinking, okay, well, with this key light source, this is a little, um, maybe a little too intense for what I'm going for or what I'm sort of imagining for that final image. So, um, here just going into the rest of the content manager and finding some of the existing presets and, uh, yeah, just playing around with what works. This one feels a little bit more naturalistic. Um, and of course, you can use that in combination with the IBL lighting, um, so the image-based lighting. So you can kind of push and pull those back and forth by bringing in your own HDRI. Um, as well here, um, setting up the camera, which is a way of uh, saving out a consistent render. And we'll we'll go through this a little bit more here shortly. Uh, but once you have that render window, then it's much easier to save this out because this process might be a bit unconventional for what character creator really is intended for. And, and to me, this is only the tip of the iceberg in terms of what this uh, can do. But the goal for this pipeline was to really try and show how much could just be done within a few programs without having to jump around to a bunch of different, um, you know, uh, render engines or, or texture programs to get... Uh, you know, uh, essentially just one concept image or a few concept images out. Here is just some uh, background element, like some studio um, uh, backdrops to catch some of that light so you get more of a natural fall off. Um, you'll see that I actually start to include um, a little bit more in here in terms of uh, some environment elements um, I that just, you know, were available inside of Character Creator. So here I'm just working through some of the stage elements that are available through the um, content in your smart gallery. Um, some of these, uh, I believe, were downloaded separately through the uh, content store on Realusion. Uh, you can obviously access these through your smart gallery or your content. Um, I, I like kind of going through the smart gallery to see everything kind of grouped together. So it makes it much easier to go through and get some of these specific post-processing effects. Uh, I wasn't quite happy with the lighting I had, so I, I elected to take a look at some of these um, full-figure lighting scenarios um, and 
trying to find something that captures the aesthetic um, that I was looking for, which is a combination of, you know, like a really nice moody uh, piece, but with, uh, you know, dramatic lighting or a specific one uh, key light on my character that will um, really do a nice job of selling uh, the overall mood of the piece. So here I'm just kind of going in and, and making a few more adjustments to that lighting setup, shifting the color chromatically a little bit towards that cooler blue tint, um, which just kind of helps give the idea that maybe there's this sort of LED or cool blue street lamp or something uh, close to her. So, um, you know, we have this overall blue aesthetic. Now, of course, I can uh, combine the IBL lighting, um, the image-based lighting with some other... Um, you know, additional lights if I were to put them in the scene, but I find that if I overdo it and throw too many in here, it starts to overcomplicate it and make the scene a bit muddier. So I just want to keep it as simple as possible to show off the design. So now I'm bringing in this almost asphalt like um, pavement or, or, or road uh, piece for the, the floor uh, or ground plane, I should say. Uh, this is cool because you have some additional props and accessories and environment uh, pieces in your stage that you can bring in to kind of fill out the rest of your environment. So here I found this really great uh, sort of concrete wall that can be a stand-in for whatever architecture is right behind our character here. Um, and there, there's not a lot going on in the scene. It's really just creating this vignette um, for our character, this this slight b backdrop, you know, rather than just that desaturated sort of um, uh, studio backdrop that was in the scene, um, which completely works but here i just want to sell a little bit more of the atmosphere of our character and you can see by just moving back the the wall piece a little bit um it was obstructing that rim light from behind so i'm just moving that back so i can catch a little bit more of that lighting that's uh being obstructed from this uh piece of geometry for the stand-in for our wall here because i do want a little bit of that lighting that technically you know we don't really have anything um in the scene generating that light it's kind of a visual cheat but um, you know, it's going to be something off, uh, you know, right out of frame from the camera that shows off, um, or is giving off that, uh, that rim light. Um, and, and two, just making some further adjustments. I'm being, you know, I'm pretty liberal with the choices here, uh, making some quick modifications, just trying to get the scaling right. Uh, you can come in here to the modifier palette and make some further adjustments. Um, I, I was kind of dark the ground plane so just wanted to come in here and adjust some of the uh the values brighten it up a little bit so not that it's competing with the background but at least it felt a little bit more uh cohesive the great thing about having that geometry in place is you can see we get that beautiful cast shadow that that runs along the ground plane and up against the wall uh which would is is a great efficient time saver so that i don't have to map that shadow out and of course as i change the poses on our character so too will that shadow change so um, this is great because I can actually change the, you know, the, the, the textural um, detail here by, you know, shifting the roughness, trying to get some of that specularity, like it's maybe a slightly wet city street, um, just catching some of those highlights from the lighting setup there, sort of catching some of that cool uh, bluish green uh, hue there in the, in the ground plane. So it's always a balance trying to figure out conceptually what, you know, I'm going to uh, utilize 3D for, what I can use photo, and what I can use paint for. So it's a delicate balance trying to find that back and forth. But through this process, I found that Character Creator was able to very quickly take care of um, some of those those things that would be potential pitfalls um, further along in the process. So just making some last minute adjustments to uh, that key light multiplier there, uh, just tweaking the brightness a bit more, the, the radius, that overall scale of that light. And then, of course, uh, jumping into the really exciting part here, which is the posing. Um, so this is where uh, character creator really shines. So you can see with the click of a button um, with this character as it's rigged and we have all of uh, the costume elements bound to um, those parented forms uh, very quickly, we can just simply click a button and get a really great pose. And, and for those of you, you know, that obviously have worked in other programs, you'll find that, you know, or you, you obviously know how difficult that can be. Um, so here I, this was essentially that original, um, 
I had something very similar like this from the original pose on those sketches. I wanted to make some changes to that pose uh, just to bring a little bit more of that attitude in here. Um, I'm just quickly going in there, grabbing that individual shoulder pauldron and just slightly tweaking it. Um, as this is going to be a standalone static image, um, I can come in here and manually adjust where some of the costume is falling, adjust any potential issue or pinching or inner penetration. Um, so you can see from that camera angle, everything's working pretty well. Um, and as I mentioned before, again, that really great cast shadow against that uh, back concrete wall. So now I'm um, just going through and setting up uh, the resolution of um, the window. I'm going to set up the, the, the render um, to be high resolution three by three um, super sampling because here I want to make sure that I'm, I'm kind of maxing out all the specs. Now I'm not using the internal eye render. I'm actually just going to use the real time document render because there are some uh, th uh, features of the, uh, the new uh, character creator skin gen uh, that shows through beautifully inside of just the real time render. So as I finish this up, I noticed there's just a couple uh, little tweaks I want to make just before we render out the final image, one of which is um, actually reworking um, a, a pattern that I had placed on her cheek of this kind of QR code, uh, a riff on the old uh, barcode motif of, of the tattooing on the face. So I was trying to move a little bit further ahead in technology, so utilizing, again, one of the skin gen tools in there to uh, place a sort of a beveled um, tattoo on her face. It works wonderfully, keeps me from having to comp it in later, utilizing other photo imaging tools. Um, so here, just going through, just double checking that the viewport is set up uh, the way I wanted to, um, increasing the resolution size. So here is about, is roughly about 1500. So I want to make sure that it's about a 3K uh, render, anywhere from a 3 to 4K render. Uh, it can always uh, lower the resolution, but you can't really increase the resolution. And since we're really just dealing with this one beauty image, this one render pass, um, this is what I have to work with. So I really want to make sure that everything is set the way I want it to, that the format is correct. Um, going through, making some further adjustments. You know, it's always worth just kind of playing around, uh, tweaking. You know, here at this sort of ambient occlusion, I basically minimize some of the effect there, um, elect to keep some elements, remove others, um, increasing the high dynamic range here, um, increasing that, br uh, getting some of that bloom effect uh, around uh, the lenses of her goggles. Um, here again, just something that can be done in camera. The more I can do here, the better. Some fill light coming in from uh, from a uh, an H, uh, HDRI um, that I use in other programs, but just bring it in to see what kind of effect I could get. Um, and it's something that I'm going to continue to play with to see how I can blend uh, these elements together. But a lot of this, like most design, was just uh, trial and error to see what worked and, uh, more importantly, what didn't work. Um, my eyes always moving around the scene, double checking things, triple checking things, uh, because we've put so much work into getting it to this stage that I'd hate to finish it up and find that there was a very simple mistake that I could have avoided, um, you know, earlier on. Now, by adjusting the modifier of the camera in here, I can kind of tweak things like the focal length and the angle of view. Um, so just kind of looking how that perspective is affecting uh, this image. And as I go through and just make some of those final uh, modifications of the camera, um, I'll go through and, and tweak things like depth of field, get some of that lens blur in there. Um, I, I tend to limit this um, a bit at this stage because it gets a little tricky when you're trying to control um, uh, your painting. So um, now this is really nice, uh, the ability to use... Uh, color map to uh inside here to to check uh where our um uh lens blur and find an area of focus so once my camera is finished everything's looking the way i want it to look 
I come over to my content, over to my stage here, and over to the camera submenu. And here under my custom, I will save out a render view. Uh, essentially saves out this camera for future use so that when I want to render out different costumes or bits and pieces, I can comp it together.